Hello and welcome to the eighth part of my LEGO Powered Up tutorial that you can also use for Control Plus and Boost. Today we want to talk a little bit more about motors and here I have most of the Powered Up motors. I want to talk about positions and speed and stuff like that. And first of all, we have to make sure that you know which motors can measure what. It's basically not that hard. There are dump motors like these two, they can't measure things, they can only move with a certain power, but they can't control the speed of something. And there are other motors with sensors. The boost motors and the motor in the move up are limited too, but it doesn't matter with the powered up app because as far as I know, there are not really blocks for the other motors that can't be used with this motor. Sadly, I had to change a bit with my setup because this hub doesn't work properly with all of the programs. It might be because of the motors, but this one works properly, so I will use this one in this video. And the idea is to control this motor, the motor on port B, with the other motor, the motor on port A. We can use that for a Ferris wheel or similar things. Like we can uh, set a position and then the motor turns at a speed. We can change the position and then it will move with another speed. But let's check out what's possible. This is our program. It's completely empty. And first you can check if the motors can do what we want. For that, we can use these blocks. We can use these blocks to read the sensor values. The first one is uh, the speed. Let's say that I turn this motor, then there will be a number different than zero, and the number is zero if I do nothing. The other value, the right one, is the position. So let's say that I move this, then it changes the position, but it keeps the value because it's the position of the motor. Keep in mind that this is not the position of a model or of a wheel or something. This is the position of the motor, a full turn, uh, 360 degrees, and every movement is a uh, part of that. We can read the position and we can use that to control other things. We want to set the speed of the motor, so we can use this block. Keep in mind that we want to control the speed of the second motor on port B, and we have the port value and the speed value. You can look closely and then you will see that here's a round edge and this input has a round edge too. So we can simply connect this block to that block and then we will use the output value of this block as the input value of this block. So we measure the position of the motor on port A and use the position as the speed on port B. Calculating with these numbers is pretty strong or pretty powerful. We can put that into a loop and then we can test the program. Let's start it and the motor already turns. So I can change the, uh, the position of this motor. And the other motor will change the speed. Again, you can use this to control a Ferris wheel. You can hide this motor somewhere on the layout or you can use another motor that has a rotation sen sensor and then simply use it to control the speed of this motor that powers the wheel. But there is more stuff that we can do. We can of course control the power. It's pretty similar to what happens when we control the speed, just that this one works with motors that don't have a rotation sensor. So we can use a motor with a rotation sensor as an input for a motor without a rotation sensor. But we can also control the position of the second motor. We have three blocks that are important to control the position. 
this block, this block, and this block. This one simply resets the value of the position sensor. So currently, the position of port of motor on port B is 33, and we can run this program for port B, and then it will be reset to zero. And then we have two blocks to control the position of the motor. The first one moves for the value that's given. So let's say that we have the position of port of the motor on port A as input for the motor on port B, and we put that into a loop. Then it will run. It will set the position or it will add the value of the motor on port A to the position of port B. Then it will return or it will go through the loop again. It will add this value again and again and again. So it will always move for a bit. And that's not really what we want if we want to control the position of the motor. This one doesn't keep the old position in mind and simply moves for a relative position that's given here. The other block, this one, moves to a absolute position. So let's say that the value here is 23. Then we can launch this program and the position of motor B will be 23. So it actually moves to the position. We can change the speed to something slower if we want it to move slower to the position or to something higher if we want it to move faster to the position. So let's check this program. It moves to the position. And if I change this position, it will try to move to the other position. And I can change the speed. It works pretty similar. I really suggest you to play around with the different blocks to get an understanding of what position and speed and stuff like that means. And another important aspect from this part is that we can use values from sensors as inputs or as other stuff. So we can use this value to put it here, this value to put it here. And we can calculate with the values. There are more blocks here. And that's pretty powerful. But always keep in mind that some blocks are round and some blocks have an edge. And they are not completely compatible. That was everything that I wanted to tell you in this part. Thanks for watching. I really suggest you to make a few tests on your own. You can use other values if you want to. There are other sensor blocks that can detect uh, numbers. You can use the color of a sensor or the position of a hub. Just make sure that everything works. So thanks for watching. See you in the next part and bye.